All right, everyone. So for our, for our third day of class, for our last day of class, we're going to talk about Facebook. Uh, now, Facebook, if you haven't heard, is the largest social media in the world, one of the most trafficked websites in the world. Uh, it has about 1.3 billion users worldwide. Not million. Billion. So it would be a thousand million people. 1.3 uh, or so billion people. And in the world, we have a population of about like 7 billion, 6.5 billion, something like that. So a lot of people use Facebook throughout the world. <coughs> so on the one hand, if my business is on Facebook, if my presence is on Facebook, I'm reaching a lot of people. But on the other hand, I'm, in a, need I'm a needle in a haystack. I'm one of many restaurants. Restaurants in San Diego. Restaurants on Main Street. I'm one of many web designers. I'm one of many bakeries, dog walkers, um, web designers. I'm one of many, many, many businesses on Facebook because there's so many people and entities on Facebook. I say entities because the funny thing about Facebook is that we can have real people and we can also have businesses. We can also have fictional companies, fictional characters, causes and events. We can have many things on Facebook. And just very recently, I think today, I don't know if it's rolled out yet, but Facebook has announced that they're going to go compete a little bit more head-to-head -head with, uh, with Yelp and Angie's List. Um, so if you haven't heard of Angie's List, it's a website where you go, let's say you need a plumber, you look up a plumber on Angie's List and, and hire them and such. Uh, well, Facebook wants to do something like that, local recommendations. And they've got the money and the resources to, to do it. Who knows if it'll be successful or not. But Facebook's been successful in many things and not successful in other things. But as a company, it behooves us to get on Facebook. So how many of you currently have a Facebook account? Raise your hand. How many of you currently have a Facebook business account? Okay, so maybe less people. So there is a difference between the personal account and the business account. Uh, one is called a profile, one is called a page. Personal profile, business page. So let me show you briefly an example of a business page. Facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. That's our address for my company on Facebook. If you want to take a quick look at this, you can. Or not, I'll just show you here briefly, facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. I'm not logged in. You won't be able to do very much on Facebook until you log in, and most of these social networks are like that. You need an account, you need to log in before you do anything. Uh, Facebook is what you would call a walled garden. You can look into it, but you can't do much until you get in. And you get in with an account, a free account. So the anatomy, you know probably what Facebook is. You've got uh, various um, posts and content and likes and all of that, just like any other, thank you, just like any other page. I tried to click on something and it says, please log in. You won't be able to do anything until you're logged in. And stats show, statistics show that most people are logged in all the time, even if they don't notice it. If you log into Facebook and you never click the logout button, you're still logged into Facebook, which is good and bad because it's tracking you. And that sounds good or bad. It might be good because let's say you're on different websites and you keep looking at technology blogs. When you get into Facebook proper, it will then show you stuff about technology, which might be good for a business. Because I want to get seen for my technology posts, my bakery posts, my content. Of course, it could be bad because I don't want Facebook to pay attention to what I'm doing online and show me stuff that I don't really care about. But I'm not going to log in yet. I'm just going to try to show that. And again, it's not going to really let me do too much until I log in, and that's okay. We'll log in in a moment. I have a question. You told me if you don't log out, you say it's dropping here. Mm -hmm. So if the like, connection is you know, dropped, mm -hmm. and you don't have any other choice but log out, and you have to log in again to log out, Possibly. Just because you dropped your connection and lose the connection doesn't mean you really logged out. As soon as you get your connection back, Facebook checks the cookie 
that it left on your computer to check did they log did they log out or not. Getting a broken connection doesn't me really mean logged out. So Facebook could still continue to track you after you've connected back to the internet. So you still have to manually click that log out button. And they don't make it obvious. They, uh, they make an obvious log in, but they don't make an obvious log out. We'll see where it is in a moment. So I'm not going to be able to do very much until I log in. I'll do that in a moment. I'll do, I want to do one more thing. Anyone want to guess? Uh, raise your hand if you think Facebook is at least one year old. Facebook has existed for one year. Raise your hand. Okay? At least. Raise your hand if you think Facebook has existed for at least five years. Okay, raise your hand. Uh, raise your hand if you think Facebook has at least has existed for at least eight years. What about at least ten years? What about fifteen years? No, nope. no. Nope. Facebook has not been around fifteen years. Facebook has been around about, I believe, eleven years. Two thousand fourteen. Uh, Two thousand fourteen was the ten year anniversary of Facebook. So it might seem like it's been around a long time, it's only 10 years, but that's half, a little bit, almost half the age of the, of the web. Now the internet is older, the web is younger. There is a difference. If people talk about the internet or the web, there is a difference, but we use it interchangeably. The web are websites. Google, Gmail, Yahoo, Microsoft, Apple, .com, all of those are websites, part of the internet. Internet are all connected computers in the world, an interconnected network, the Internet. The Internet's been around since the 60s or so. The Web has been around since around 1989. That's, you know, 26 years. Facebook's been around 11 of those years. Older websites than Facebook include Amazon. That's been around since around 1995. I, I think Amazon celebrated their 20-year anniversary this year. And Yahoo also is around 96 or 94, around there. So there's older websites out there that are still around. And Facebook is one of the biggest and most famous. Google, I think they've got about also uh, 15 years, something like that. And we'll do, um, do one more thing here, then we'll actually log in and such. Uh, Wikipedia, I'm going to take a quick look at Wikipedia to look up the Facebook article, simply to show you a few stats, and also to remind you that Wikipedia is currently having their pledge drive. Mm -hmm. If you would like to donate to Wikipedia, it could be as little as $3. The cool thing about that is how many of you have ever used Wikipedia before? You never paid anything for it. You've probably used it for years, getting lots of great knowledge for free. And sometimes it's not always the most accurate knowledge, but in the grand scheme of it, I find myself Wikipedia highly invaluable, and I donated a little bit. Three dollars, five dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever. But I'm going to use Wikipedia again, and I don't work for Wikipedia, but I recommend give them a few bucks. At the end of the season, maybe we're thinking about our taxes, donations, donate to Wikipedia. What I want to look here at Wikipedia article, yeah, February 4th, 2004, so that's Facebook's birthday. It started off as, a, as an invite-only social network uh, founded in Harvard, I believe, one of the Ivy League colleges. If you were a student there, you could get into the Facebook, which was early, early Facebook. I think one of the earliest names of Facebook, I think, was called something like Face Slam or something. But then it became the Facebook, and now it's yes. Facebook. Face Mash, something like that. And so then it opened up to more colleges, then it opened up to regular people, then it opened up to businesses. So a huge pool of people had created a community in Facebook, and then Facebook said, how can we make money off of this? Let's get businesses to get in here to advertise. So that's how we're going to use Facebook, again, as a marketing platform to reach one point whatever billion users. And Facebook is so big and profitable that they actually are listed on the stock market. You can buy Facebook stock. Um, Facebook stock at the moment is worth $104.55. 
uh, down 11 cents today. But at one point it started at, at you know $12 a share and now it's $104 a share. And Facebook stock has been out for about two years now. So if you had bought it when, in the beginning, you know, you had a good good return on your investment. And it's still relatively affordable, $100 a share. Um, Apple stock is about $112 a share, and that's a huge, highly profitable company. Uh, so Facebook has shares that you can buy in the stock market. Twitter has shares you can buy in the stock market. LinkedIn as well. What else? Etsy, Amazon, Yahoo, a lot of tech companies have shares. Square, that little credit card reader thing that everyone seems to have, that just went public uh, about three weeks ago or less. Um, and so I don't own any Facebook stock, um, but I'm, I've, I watch this stuff and I, and I like to know about it. And so it's interesting that um, you can buy uh, Facebook shares. You can buy shares on a uh, uh, you can buy shares on a tech company that what is the product? You can think about, okay, Coca-Cola, they make drinks and such. You can buy shares in Whole Foods. They have a supermarkets. You can buy shares in AT&T. They're about technology and communications and such. Facebook, Twitter, Etsy, you know, there's these new brand of companies that sometimes, what's their product? What do they do? How are they profitable? Why are they profitable? But we're seeing here that Facebook is doing well. So what we're going to do is let's go into Facebook and the way that Facebook works is that you have to create a business page on top of a personal profile. One of the common mistakes for people to do is I've got this sign up screen here and I'm going to fill in my information of my company. But no, that's not the right way. It's asking you, what's your first name and last name? You might think, well, I'll just put my company name in there. No, again, that's not the way Facebook wants you to create a business page. They used to be known as fan pages also, but basically a business page. You don't create a page like a person. Because even though it says birthday there, you might think, well, that's the year I founded my company. No, again, Facebook wants a real person to create a real person account, a profile, and then you can create as many business pages as you want. You don't have to use the personal account at all. You don't have to put in your birthday and your high school and where you went to school, uh, college, or what jobs you have. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to invite your friends and family. You don't have to interact with them. You can be a total hermit on Facebook. That's fine. But you need that account, personal, to then create a business <coughs> page. That's what we'll do. So. If you don't have a Facebook account, a personal one, you will have to create one, and I'm not going to go through the process because everyone usually has one. I'm going to log into my personal Facebook. You need to log into your personal Facebook, and then right away we'll transition over to the business aspect of it. So go to Facebook.com, take a moment to sign in, and then after that I'll show you what to do. Say I'm going to use my personal one. Hopefully nothing not safe for work shows up, but that's Facebook. So take a moment to sign in if you haven't signed in yet. And then we will uh, create the business page. <laughs> All right, did everyone get a chance to sign in? Okay, so the um, Facebook layout is a super cluttered mess, a lot of stuff to look at, but the important thing, at the very top right corner, I'm logged in as myself, there's my name, friends and all of that stuff, personal. Here is the big secret. There's a little triangle 
on the top right corner of the top blue bar, the little black triangle. I'm sure it has an official name. I'm going to call it the little black triangle. Click on that triangle on the top right, not that one below your pages if you see it, but a black triangle at the top right. There's a bunch of options here. Uh, the thing about Facebook, like Google+, I can create a personal account and then manage multiple business accounts like Google+. Same thing on Facebook here. Mine says use Facebook ads. And so if you have a personal account, you can create business pages. If you created a Facebook page as a business, it's wrong. Technically, you're violating the terms of service of Facebook and they could shut it down. You also don't want to create a, um, a personal, you don't want to use business information to create a personal account because you're not going to get insights. You're not going to get statistics about all of the things that you post, how well they're doing. And also, you're not going to have the ability to tap into the whole Facebook um, boosted post feature, which I'll explain what it is. But on mine, a quick browse here, it shows from my personal, I can go work on these business pages or more of them. And I've got like 15 that I'm involved in. I don't believe there's a limit, but I've got about 15. And down here at the very bottom, well, it used to be at the very bottom, but now it's near the bottom, log out. There is the log out button that I, that I mentioned earlier. If you came in a little late, what I said was that if you never explicitly log out of Facebook, it's going to track you. It's going to track you to show you ads, which perhaps for yourself you don't want that, but for potential customers you do. So, um, I usually do it when I drop out because the connection is bad, then I go logging out, but there is no anything I can get in because I have a private set, so there is no, I can go back, so I just re log in to log out. I think that sounds all right. If you are using that privacy and such, that, that does help. Yes. I'm talking about the average person. The average person might not know about this, and you seem to be a little bit more privacy savvy, which is good. Uh, so for most people, um, they wouldn't know that. They just close the web browser, and they're still logged in. So do you guys see something that either says create page or manage page? Who sees manage pages? A few people. Uh, if you don't see manage pages, that means you don't have pages to manage. So what we'll do is we're going to do create page. If you've already got a page, so I've said this before for other social networks, if you've already got a page, if you've already got a Twitter, Google+, Facebook, whatever, you can use the one you currently have and apply what I'm going to talk about. But I recommend, again, to create a brand new one to play with, to make mistakes on, and then we'll delete it. Whatever you learn here from this new temporary fake page, we can apply to your real page. So if you'd like to use an existent page, go ahead. But I'm going to go through the process of creating a page because Facebook, all the networks, they change things once in a while. And to stay up to date, one of the things that I find that's useful is to create new accounts once in a while, especially when I know that they've changed things, so that I can see the new features. Using an account for a, a period of time, you sort of... You sort of uh, get lulled into the system as it is without, in, without really knowing anything new. Creating new accounts keeps you sharp about what's new, what's effective, what's interesting. So you're going to click on the little triangle on the top right and click Create Page. You have then first six options here. What kind of page will you create? You've got local business, company, brand, etc. Local business is highly useful if you have a business with a physical location. If you've got an actual store on Main Street, I would recommend you go to local business or place because then people can check in. That is, they're on their mobile device, which has GPS, they're on Facebook, and then they can see, show me restaurants nearby, and it could show your restaurant. That doesn't happen with these other ones because they're not tied to a physical location, even one like company, perhaps. Local business is the one that really is connected to a physical location, and it can be a place. So if you're in charge of managing, for example, the local wildlife refuge, and you want people to come to visit, that would be a place. Although I suppose it could also be a cause or a community. You have to decide what to use here. 
One caveat about local business, um, I believe in order for this to fully work, it's going to want to, at this moment, confirm that's your business. Um, I believe they want to call your business at your business number. So you're not at the shop right now, you can't answer the phone to confirm with Facebook. Um, I think another way to confirm is that they send you something in the, in the mail, US mail, in about a week or so. They give you a code, then you confirm it. For right now, just to learn this maybe, I would select the company, because notice that one's not asking me what's your address, zip code phone, because if you put a phone, it's going to want to confirm by calling you at your, at your business number, your business line. You can, uh, you, you can change this, but again, I'm recommending just create a temporary fake page to learn this stuff, and then apply it to your real one. And notice there's six options, but then within each category, there's many subcategories. And is there, yes. way, is there a way to find out? Because it's been so long since that I did it. If I did it as a local business or as a company organization? Yes. Once we get past this screen, on the next screen, when we look at settings and such, it'll tell you. So we'll check that in a moment. The interesting about Facebook is that you can create businesses and brands. Like if you've got one particular product that you really want to hype on social media on Facebook, you can create a page just for it just for that one product, sure, as well as your whole business, if you'd like. That's obviously more effort because then you're managing two Facebooks and such. And do they link up or no? Uh, you can link them, yes. They're not linked automatically, but you can link them. Okay, so the statistics would apply to the product and the business? You'd get statistics for each of them, actually. Separately, oh, good. Separately, yes. Uh, for local business, you can also do, if you've got more than one franchise. If you've got a location on this side of town and on that side of town, you can have multiple locations and all of them are linked together and each has their own statistics. I remember seeing a few years ago someone creating a Facebook page called something like, if I get one million likes, my wife agreed to name our first child Megatron. <laughs> So if, that, if, if people like that page a, a million times, supposedly, the wife was going to allow the child to be called Megatron, which is a Transformers name. I don't know if it happened. It probably did. But they probably got a million likes. But I don't know if they really named the child. Probably the middle name, Jonathan Megatron Smith. So you can make a Facebook page of anything. For us, we're going to make uh, whatever, but I'm going to choose a business, a company, category. You have a variety to choose from. I'm going to make my fictional Victor's Bakery which is um, food and beverage. You might get sub subcategories sometimes. Choose what's appropriate. And then it'll ask for a company name. Here I can put um, full words and spaces and symbols, maybe even emoji. I haven't checked it. But uh, smiley faces and all of that. Um, that name right there is not the URL name is not the name that will appear up here. It's not going to be facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. Um, what I type right here will not show up in the address. I do that a little later. Some of you, though, might get the option right away within this screen. Put in your company name and your address. If you do see that address, you could select it if you want. But be careful. If you're doing this just for practice, you don't want to claim that name on a page you're creating for practice that you might delete because that name, only one in the whole world can have that name. So if you claim that name on this testing account, you'll have to change your name to release it to then use it on your real account. So be careful. And I believe Facebook allows you to change the name of your business. Um, I forget exactly how they say it, but I think you can only do it twice in the lifetime of your business. So if you change to some other name, it, I believe it lets you do it twice. I might be mixing it up with another network. Another network that I recall says you can change it twice per year or something like that. But anyway, go ahead and get click Get Started. So as long as you're using for a year, you change the name next year then. Well, that's what I need to remember. I don't remember if it is this network, Facebook, that does it per year or only or forever. I think I 
Personal? Well, that's that's personal business. Yeah, we'll have to look into it. Yeah, the point is that, and we're only talking about the address, not the name of the business. We can change that how we want. Basically, the address of the business, the Facebook address, that's a little more limited. We'll look up what it is. Mine and yours changes, perhaps, but mine has four steps that I need to complete. If you have more or less, that's okay. Um, there's a there's an about, there's a little box for a description. This is your short description. On another screen, we'll have the long description, and then your website. Uh, so here, the tip is add a description and website to improve ranking of your page in search. Facebook has its own built-in search. This is completely separate than a Google search, than a Bing search, than a Yahoo search. Those are searching the whole internet. This search only searches in Facebook, which is a huge network, but it's only inside of its own network. So what it's saying here is, if you want to get found, you're yet another bakery, you're yet another uh, vegan-friendly, gluten-free, organic, fair trade selling bakery, how are you going to stand out from the rest? They give you a spot there for a description. And so you should take advantage of this for SEO purposes, search engine optimization, or Facebook SEO, to write a sentence or two about your company. You might not have a great idea right now, but you can edit it later. I'll show you where. Simply, I'm going to say San Diego based bakery in the heart <coughs> of East Lake. We specialize in vegan. Uh, vegan friendly, gluten free, modern takes on traditional baked goods. I believe there is a limit. I'm not ex. Oh, yeah, there it is. On the top right corner, it's counting down how much space you have. I've got 19 characters left. You can't write an essay here, you can write it elsewhere. But you want to put in some keywords, your concept, what makes you unique. I could easily put Big Green San Diego. Well, you and a thousand others. I don't want to come I don't want to compete with Hilda's bakery because I'm on East Lake. I'm in East Lake and I focus on these keywords and demographics. Website. Example, your website, Twitter, or other social media links. So if you've got uh, your main website. If you've got um, your Etsy store, your eBay store, a Twitter profile, whatever, you can put that here. You can even be a little bit out of the box and think like this. I have Victor's Bakery, let's say, but I want to direct traffic from my Facebook back to my Victor's Bakery and I want to reward people from Facebook and entice people from Facebook to go to my website to buy my product by perhaps um, guiding them at this point here to a specific landing page on my site. A landing page is simply a page on my website where traffic lands on it. The traffic is directed to from an email campaign, from a Facebook post, Twitter, whatever. Usually these landing pages are not part of the main menu. On my Victor's Bakery website I have home, about, contact, buy. But I don't have welcome Facebook users. It exists on my site but I don't, I can't get to it besides the specific path. That's a landing page. The point of this is perhaps I'm enticing people in my biography as well follow the link for an exclusive Facebook coupon. But I'm out of space. <laughs> so, um, that could be something you put in the bio here that could show up. And again, thinking outside the box. You can edit this as many times as you want, however you want, within reason. And I'll show you how to do it again later if you've already passed this screen. I'm going to save this info. Step two in my case is asking for a profile picture. I don't have my pictures handy with me at the moment, 
but I want to add one as soon as I can because I don't want to be yet another generic flag like that. And they probably didn't think about it because of their whole color motif, but isn't it ironic that the Facebook business page flag is a white flag? Surrender. Surrender. Surrender to Facebook. So I don't have a picture, but I'm gonna I could upload one. I suppose you could do import from site if you've got it on your website somewhere. But I'm gonna skip it, but I want to add it as soon as possible. I get uh, add to favorites. I usually skip this. I haven't really found too much use for this. What this is is when you log in as your personal account, because when you ever whenever you log into Facebook, it always goes to the personal profile first because it doesn't know to take you directly to your business especially if you're managing five businesses so you it always takes you to your personal profile when you first log in on the left side everyone has then a little sidebar called favorites where you can quickly jump to the news feed your messages or events if you'd like you can add this new page to your favorites I don't really do this and I, um, I don't do this because I had a bad experience years ago, and supposedly they fixed it, but I'm still paranoid, in that it used to be that if you put, it, put your website, your page on the favorites, you logged in as personal and clicked on it, you went to your page, but you weren't actually managing your page. You were there just to look at it. And it's happened to me in the old days that I was posting something to the business Facebook page accidentally as myself, instead of the business and so that's enough of an incentive for me to never click on it in the favorites and I'll show you the better way in a bit they probably fix this because a lot of people probably made that mistake I'm still paranoid I haven't checked it recently because I never do it this way I'm gonna do it and show you the way that you're guaranteed always to be editing your business page this page supposedly this way supposedly you're doing it I don't believe it so I'm gonna skip this could do it and then tell me if it worked or not. I'm going to skip adding to favorites. This is new. This wasn't available to people. I think they added this perhaps this year. So if you had a Facebook page for a few years now, business page, they didn't have this before. And I'll show you where you can get to this if you've already got a page. But this is the preferred page audience. Tell us about the people you'd most like to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most target audience. If you take my SEO class, I talk in there about the importance of defining your target audience. Who are you selling to? Who are your potential customers? Who would care about your product? Target audience. Facebook now has this preferred page audience. We've got locations, age ranges, genders, and interests. This is all very good to fill in. Um, Starting with locations, for example, everyone in this location. Now notice you get a little pop-up info button on some of these to help you, perhaps. Enter the countries, states, or cities, or zip codes, where the people you most want to connect with are located. Please note that city and zip locations aren't available in all countries. So we have everyone in this location, people who live in this location, people recently in this location, people traveling in this location. This is pretty cool, pretty complex, because what if I am creating a Facebook page for my local animal sanctuary and I really want to tar target tourists? So people using Facebook all the time, people chatting with each other, I'm at National Park, people checking in to National Parks. Facebook knows all of that information that people are willingly giving it. For us as marketers, that's great, because then we can set this. People that are out of town, traveling to San Diego, let my page show up for them more often, because they might like what, I, what, what I'm about. People whose home or most recent location is within the area, people who call this area their home, etc. It, it's pretty effective because it's so accurate. Facebook's been around a decade. People have been using it for a long time. People have been using smartphones 
for a long time with GPS and logged into it all the time and adding to it all the time. So they've got a lot of information, so it's effective. And we're going to find other ways as well to be even more effective. So this is something to think about what would, what would apply for you. I'm going to leave it on everyone, but if it, if it makes sense to you to put these other ones, you can. Then we have include or exclude. Add bulk locations if you want to ta target multiple. You can drop a pin, or you can say, for example, okay, I am a bakery. And yes, I'd love it if everyone in the world came to my bakery, but obviously I have to exclude Canada and Chile and uh, England, and everywhere. I'm going to have to exclude everywhere except really San Diego. So if I put in San Diego, Yes, people from LA will still be able to see my page. You're not excluding anyone unless you choose exclude. But let's say my big target audience is San Diego. Secondary target audience, Los Angeles. In Cal this vision site, that if you say like that, he said you actually be in like Twitter. You actually see how many people watching your site. Is it possible that you can see it? Yes, definitely. Facebook watching your site. Definitely, we'll get we'll get insights, yeah. we'll get statistics from Facebook, where it'll tell us all of that, yeah. where they're watching from, genders, the times of day, everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. so I I think we logged in to the back page and we created the page I think. Mm -hmm. Now I can't go back to that. You just have to wait a moment till I'm done with this, and then I can show you where where that's at. Um, but. The, the thing about locations is then you can also set a radius. Notice within 25 miles, um, exclude, etc. So it can be pretty complex. I'm not going to go too far, but let's say Los Angeles and San Diego are my, are my two targets right there. Sorry, Oceanside. No, anyone can see it. But these are the, these are the places that Facebook is going to try to... Um, Promote my page more too. Age ranges. Again, I could say everyone's gonna love my um, my uh, my products, but it really is better to focus on a demographic. Notice the youngest is 13, and then you've got uh, 65 and up. So you have to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook. So if you've got little cousins that are like 10 years old and using Facebook, I'm gonna report you because it's only for 13 year olds and older. I'm going to say here, I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know, 24 to 34 age range. You can always change this, of course. I'll show you where to do it later, but here's who I'm targeting. Men or women, probably both, or target one. And then really cool here, interests. Whenever you log in and it asks you, what are you up to today? And you write, I watch Game of Thrones. It recorded that. Whenever you went to a video game site and clicked like, it recorded that. Whenever you wrote about anything, it recorded that. And therefore, those are interests. Those are millions, billions of results that it's recording. And this is for us to tap into right here. I can click Browse if I don't know what to look for. If I click Browse, okay, what's your business about? Food and drink. So if I open Food and Drink, okay, is it specifically alcoholic beverages, cooking, cuisine, food, restaurants? Mm, what's under food? Barbecue, chocolate, desserts. Yeah, desserts. So I'm going to be targeting people that really love desserts. And I can add a few more here. Also, it's going to perhaps then suggest as you start to browse a little bit, then it's going to suggest. If you put your mouse over some of these, it's going to tell you. Cookie. 102 million people expressed an interest or a like in cookies. Confectionery, so the high-class people, 76 million. Ice cream, 127 million, beat out cookies. Yogurt, 38 million. No one likes yogurt. Well, yes, 38 million. But uh, here you can then specify even more in detail. I'm just going to choose one more. Chocolate, ooh, 233 million people like that. I think there's a limit, but you know you can add as much as you want here, basically. And this is all very useful, but then there will be another screen where I'll show you how to get even more effective. And 
then I'll click save. When I save that, there's a basic tour to kind of point out different screens on, on Facebook here. Everything you need to manage your pages in these tabs at the top. We'll look at each of these screens. I'm going to go to next. Like the page right now has zero likes, not even myself. Well, I can like my own page, sure. And then I got at least one like. So there's a lot there's a lot to to learn about the anatomy of Facebook and um, how to get likes and all of that which we'll cover of course but here's how I want to do this we created a page right now and I've noticed before in other classes that I've taught if I continue at this point a lot of people run into a problem so here's how I figured out that problem Click on the top right corner, your little triangle. Click log out and close the web browser. I want to show you how to get back into this as if you were going to get back into it for real. Like when you go home, people always tell me, I went home and I tried to do it and I couldn't do it. Well, let me show you that before you go home, of course. I close my web browser. I'm going to open a different web browser just to show you completely. I logged out, closed my browser, opened a different browser. I'm going to go to Facebook again. I'm going to log in again. The point of this exercise is to show you that this is how you make sure that you are editing the page that you think you're editing. I forgot to mention it, but a moment ago, when when you were seeing my brand new Victor's Bakery, it was still showing my name. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So, am I really editing my page, or am I posting on my page as Victor? I don't want to have that ambiguity. Here's how you fix that. Whenever you log in and you see your name, click on the triangle, and if you've only got one other Facebook page you're working with, you'll see it right here. Because you used to be able to scroll through these and now Facebook changed it and you have to click See More. I manage more than one, so I have the See More button. You might have right away your business page listed. So I'm not, I'm not working on Victor's page. I want to work on one of these business pages. On my case, I have to click See More. Here's all my pages that I manage. And there's the one in question, Victor's Bakery, log in. I find it super odd that they did that. Why am I going to log in again? I'm already logged into Facebook. In the old days, a few months ago, I could simply scroll through that list without having to go to a new screen. I think this screen is completely worthless. But um, the point is you need to click log in to your business page, and then it should show your name there, If the name of your business. If it shows the name of you as a person, be careful. You might be posting personal stuff on the business page or vice versa. This is the way that I'm saying I do it. I make sure that I switch to the business page through that little triangle there. Anyway, these things that you have a multiple account, but that they're all attached to one of your email account, right? Mm -hmm. To create a of them. Mm -hmm. And then you say this is the one you have to do with that Google account? Well, you do that with Google and you do it with Facebook. You use one email account, mm -hmm. one user, to create many business pages. Oh, really? That's so what I've got. You have to be a different telephone number right? because if you create multiple accounts with the same, same email address, they're going to tell me that you know my telephone number, if they terminated for two step verification, if you know, using a telephone number mm -hmm. or changing out the email address or else, you know. I can't create an account. I try it now. The telephone number is a little different because if you are on the screen to create a brand new account completely, yes, your phone number is already connected and they won't let you use it. 
the way I did it was I logged in to an existing account mm -hmm. and from there I created a new page. Ah. That's the difference because it won't let you use your old phone number. Ah. But if you use your existing number and then create page like this, then it works. I see. And then if you create, login, create, then don't use the same phone number. You can use the phone number, but you, you really wouldn't because you wouldn't use the same phone number for personal and for business. Mm -hmm. as, soon as, as soon as you log in, you should see that it's your name, and then you click the triangle. And if you see your business page, you can click it. If you don't see your business page, you'll have to click See More. And then on the next screen here, your business will be listed here somewhere and click Log In. Yeah, you'll be safer with Log In. Okay, so now I'm confirming at the top right corner, it's the name of my business. If it doesn't have the name of your business, again, stop me right now because you do need to be in your business. They also added a new feature too where you can um, do posting ads. They, they have, and that's been a little while here, but I still don't trust it. I don't know why. I want to make <laughs> sure, I want to make sure I'm editing the page that I think I'm editing, even though post ads is supposed to alleviate that. This is the way that I make sure. And it may or may not come off, and I might have mentioned it before. But honestly, on a personal level, I don't like Facebook. I don't like Facebook to I don't like to use it. I don't like to connect with friends and family with it. I hardly use Facebook. I haven't posted anything in a while. Yeah. Friends are asking me, why haven't you posted on Facebook? Why haven't you liked my thing? I don't know. I haven't logged in to personal. <laughs> so on a personal, I don't like Facebook. But for business, I love Facebook. Because for business, Facebook is very powerful. All the bad things for people, for regular people, are great things for businesses. All of that privacy tracking and paying attention to everything that you do, for personal, I hate that. But for business, I love it because I can reach an audience. I'm obviously gonna, not going to abuse the power that they give me. Many people do, but I'm going to show you the tools. It's up to you to use them properly. What was the famous catchphrase? With great power comes great responsibility. With great Facebook power comes great Facebook <laughs> responsibility. <coughs> so... Uh, for various reasons, I, I don't like the face, Facebook itself. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in this class or maybe the previous class. Did I mention it in this class that Facebook was blocking any mention of a rival social network, the Sioux network? Did I mention that in this class? I heard about it. I think so, not in this class. Okay, there's another social network, pretty new, called Sioux, T S U, Sioux.co. But when another class or this class? So Sue.co is a, is a new social network. There's many of them. What's, what's, what's unique about this one? You create an account here, and whatever you post will earn you money. Whereas on Facebook, whatever you post is going to make Facebook money. On Sue, they're going to make some money, but you're going to get like 80% of the, of the revenue from that. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I'll, let you know one more, I'll let you know one more thing because Sue sounds great, but in order to create an account, it's going to ask you for a referral. And that means you need to know someone that has a Sue account. Guess who has a Sue account? Oh, nice. So if you'd like to set up your Sue account, use my referral code, VM Campos. So it's almost like when Facebook first started, you had to be a buying business. Yes. Yes. And so I've used this for about seven or nine months or so, and it's cool. It's people that are tired of Facebook, are tired of Twitter. They want something new. They want to connect with friends and family and share. But the big difference here, because there's been many so-called Facebook killers. There's the big one was Diaspora, which I thought had a lot of promise. didn't work out. Um, two is out there, and who knows, it probably won't kill Facebook, nothing will. It's just got too much inertia, for good or bad. But the thing about Sue is that, yeah, they're going to make money off of you, but you're going to get like 80% of what they make from you. And I haven't become a rich from Sue yet, but uh, if you use it consistently and uh, uh, build an audience and such, you could make a little money off of it. The point is, a few months ago, Facebook completely 
banned and erased everything about Sue from Facebook. <laughs> if you were about to post a link from your Facebook to your Sue profile, you would get an error. It wouldn't let you post it. An is, error. Is the Sue account, they have a privacy tracking? Yes. Okay. Both the same thing. Yes. Facebook was so bad about it when, that they went back in time to everyone's account and deleted all mentions of Sue. Wow. If that's not bad enough, you weren't even able to mention Sue in private messages. Oh, I thought they were private. No. Well, a couple of weeks ago, Facebook said, "Okay, Sue is okay. We'll let we'll let it we'll let it in now. So now you can you now you can put Sue links back on Facebook, and they won't be blocked. But for a couple of weeks, you could not mention at all. It was erased from history from Facebook." Um, but now they've they've let it through again. So how, I don't get how you how are you making money on it. Everything that you post, people just like on Facebook could comment it, on it, like it, share it, and such. And advertisers, just like any social network, can put a post to then reach more people. Advertisers pay to to reach more people, and then that money, most of it goes to you, and part of it goes to the company to keep them running, which is what Facebook does. But now this company gives you some of your profits. And as you create an audience and uh, followers and such, you know, you have more of an audience to share to possibly profit from. Question? Um, when I was uh, making an account, I didn't do the refer short code, and I still let me make it. Oh, okay. Wow. They, they might have changed it. I don't know if it's... Um, if it's new or what, but um, if it, it sometimes people tell me I can't log in, use my code. Then if you can, okay. then it's okay. But it, if it doesn't work with that way, then use my code. Question. Yeah, I have a question. You just mentioned about private message. Mm -hmm. But I just wondering, if those private messages, somebody you can personally private to somebody else, you know, take the message, but that. that the person use the message that you can be posted, right? You can, you know, paste it and then, you know, things like that to, you know, paste it to, you know, put on the reviews in those messages. Is it possible? On Facebook? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. The, the only thing that I know is that they had, I don't think people were looking at it, you know, to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think a computer software was looking at our private messages to find the keyword Sue and then deleting it. Oh. I don't think a person was. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It's yeah. way too much doubt to give them. But what's that? Probably some. Probably their bots, their software, just checking. That's why they can't, they can't. It's still funny about private messages. How do they find it? Well, in any event, um, let's move on here. So. Um, We'll take a quick look at a few things with this Facebook page, then we'll take a break, then we'll come back about actually posting content and how to use Facebook more effectively. Uh, I want to mention a few things briefly here. At the very top, you're going to see the page menu item. That'll take you back to your page. If you're on a different screen, it'll take you back to this page. Um, you've got also, you know, your page is what it looks like to the whole world. Mine is pretty boring. We'll work on that. Messages. If you have any messages, here there'll be listed messages such as, let's say if you allow people, we'll see this option on another screen, if you allow people to send your business a message, that could be useful. Tech support, for example. Let's say instead of someone being really annoyed and posting all over their Facebook or Twitter, I hate this company, their product was terrible, you can reach out via private messages to have this conversation out of the public and so that you can deal with the problem and then maybe get a good review and such. So you can have messaging as a business. Notifications is very similar to that little notifications globe on the top right that you've always seen. I've got one new notification. This was a more high-powered view of it. This will tell you notifications related to any likes on your page, comments, your content gets shared for other. Any requests that have been made of you to connect or other such activity. 
So in this screen, it will show you everything that has happened. I'm sorry, but I have a wonder. Doing that go to Facebook with a business with something. Facebook, you can Facebook can track your privacy. What about that? I can big your company, your big company, or somebody else in a big corporation. They can track you know individual account also, or just a Facebook one. Is it possible you can be put a spy or to somebody else? Is that no, there. I don't think there's been any cases of any spyware from that route in Facebook. However, it could happen that a link from Facebook, someone clicks that link, it goes to another website, and that website could have the spyware. Sure. I think that could happen. Yes. If I want to have customers share pictures and so on, if I click messages, can I make those public if I want to? Or is that no. a different way? You can't make these public, but on another screen we'll see that we can allow people to post and add pictures. After I edit them. Yes. 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 We'll see that okay. we'll see that in a setting screen in a moment. Okay. Publishing tools. Uh, this will show you everything that you've posted, so all your posts. This is pretty useful because sometimes I have to look at a post from a month ago. Instead of scrolling and scrolling and scrolling on the home screen, I'll find it here a little quicker because I can also search. We'll talk about uh, scheduled posts, draft posts, and expiring posts, which is new. We'll talk about those in a moment once we post. Any videos I've uploaded will be listed here. And then something called lead ads forms. This is new also. This is something that you don't get from a personal account. Leads. Leads are potential customers. If I go, uh, let's say this, they were having a networking meeting here. Everyone came, everyone gave their business cards. I'm networking. I got five business cards because let's say you were all web designers and I was looking for a new web designer and five of you gave me your business card. I have five leads, five potential uh, companies that I could hire. Uh, vice versa. You gave me a business card. I'm a lead for you, perhaps. So then what you're going to do is you're going to call me next week. Hey, are you still looking for a web designer? You're going to send me an email in two weeks. Hey, are you still looking for a web designer? That's a lead. And so we can create these things, these forms, this little funnel, just to funnel people from someone that is not a client down to a client. It's a conversion, conversion funnel. But anyway, we'll look at that. That's kind of advanced. But to possibly get more likes, more, more followers, and all of that cool stuff. <coughs> the ads forms with Tabitha? I'm looking under the publishing tools. And videos is where you would do a YouTube video? No, actually, Facebook is trying to rival YouTube in that you can upload videos directly to Facebook. Yeah. Instead of uploading to YouTube and then sharing to Facebook, you can upload directly to Facebook. And there's a big controversy about how effective is that, because Facebook is really hyping their numbers that we're bigger than YouTube now. Yeah. Well, I doubt that. But uh, you can upload to Facebook directly, or you can put a link from your YouTube to your Facebook. Oh, and you know, being paranoid and cynical, especially when it comes to Facebook, possibly the videos that you post on Facebook will be found easier than the videos that you post on YouTube because they're rival networks, rival companies. Let's look at the settings tab. There's a lot of settings here. We don't quite have time to look at them all. I'm going to jump around to a few interesting settings. Let's go to settings. Uh, this was your question that you had earlier, actually preferred page audience. That's how you can get back to that. So everyone, if you if you wanted to change that preferred page audience that we looked at when we created the page a little while ago, we can always get back to it right here. Preferred page audience in settings. There's an edit button and then you can edit it. Let's look at a few settings here. General some settings here. Let me say that Facebook is one of the best networks that you can use to really shape your message. In other words, control your message. Let's say you post uh, something on Twitter and something on Facebook. 
let's say you're asking for people's opinions of something on Facebook and on Twitter. Same question. On Twitter, conceivably, that could get away from you. People could tweet mean things, off-topic things, weird hashtags, racist stuff. It'll just get away from you because it's a very open platform, for good or for bad. Facebook, on the other hand, you can allow people to post. You can take away the ability to post. You can delete posts. You can really manage your message. So if you really want to shape that, Facebook is better than Twitter in that regard. And we can see that because we've got these options. Third option, visitor posts. Anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and videos to the page. If you click Edit, you can say Disable posts by other people on the page. There you go. No more bad messages. No one can post anything bad on your page. There's no ability. That doesn't stop them, of course, from posting bad stuff on their own page, their own profile. But here, that's how you, that's how you manage a, a community, very bluntly, so that no one can write anything negatively. The problem is no one can write anything positively. So if you allow visitors, I highly then recommend activate review posts by other people before they are published to the page. And notice that was not on by default. Mm -hmm. I noticed that because I, I um, wanted to post like, a, not tag, but um, post a picture of like somebody that I took a picture with in their page, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do it. There's always a little bit of a difference, however, between posting onto someone's personal profile and a business page. Mm -hmm. So probably they also still had some option like this turned off that doesn't let people mind. post. Because I had a friend that, that said, I keep getting these photos showing up on my profile about a Kathleen that I don't even know. That happens sometimes. You tag the wrong person and it shows up in the wrong person's page. Oh, so, wow. As a business, you have to be certain of the image to your company or business. And if it's case happened to me, I don't even know what happened. If there's somebody put in my my uh, account to the somebody else for good, I don't even know this because I am like a top member of it. But I don't even know. Is it somehow oh, I can delay? I mean, is it? Somebody trying to use your group. If you're talking literally about Facebook groups, that's another. Yeah, they can that's be another okay. thing. It's like all your people on your friends list. They can just invite you. No, I don't even friends Yeah, if you've got a Facebook group and such that you've been added to, or that you've added yourself to, it could be very open. The thing is that someone needs to go in and change their settings. Either the group owner. Or perhaps your own settings. So yes, um, the default settings perhaps are too open. If you want them a little bit more controlled, you have to go into your settings and then set them properly. Like this one. Don't let anything show up on the page until I approve it. I don't want any crazy person writing any crazy thing. I have to approve it. So if they are in there, it's too late to write anything about it. Okay. Um, I can't find them after that. They just run away. So I don't know if my account is on or not. Then somebody stole my account. They changed the email address. So I don't know where's my account. They probably stole my picture too. Ah, oh, well, that sounds a little bit deeper than, than yeah. this particular issue. It might actually be your whole account that has the problem. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know how I can delete in that history of Facebook or delete to the account. Is it possible? Because I think Facebook have an end of account in the history. They can go in back to looking five years, ten years, right? They can. That's something that we can check during the break for you individually, perhaps. Yeah. But I, there's, I believe there is a setting to delete older things. And yeah, we might I have to. I need the setting, but it's just, I only really can do it. So I just close the account. If somebody puts the same name, I'm mm -hmm. close my account and put a different picture. Really? Name. That might be more difficult. But there is, at the very top right corner, help. And there is. Um, I did ask him for nothing. Nothing. So probably they still have open the account. There's somebody probably imitating it's me to be doing something in that account, you know, activity, but it's not me. But it's not yeah, me. that sounds very, very complicated, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. We'll, we'll look at it during the, the, the breaks and such. We might be able to figure something out. 
So if you do activate this option, I, I highly recommend it because then you can you can moderate it and you'll be able to moderate that stuff inside of the notifications. I believe it's under notifications or messages, but you'll be able to go to notifications and see someone posted something. Allow it or delete it. Delete it because it's weird. Yes. You wouldn't really post that often from your personal to your business, I think. I think your business would be the main one posting. Now, as yours not letting you, check the setting. Is this on and that's why it's not letting you? Or make sure you're in the proper account to do it. There's probably a setting that is not letting you. But again, on your case, let's look during the, the break and we'll see what perhaps the wrong setting. Let's see um, what other things might stand out. Expiring posts. This one's uh, okay. This one uh, might be useful for you. Expiring posts, and this is new. Ability to set posts that expire is turned off from my page. What expiring posts are is something that we're all asking for, especially companies. I'm going to put a post that says sale this Saturday. And then a year later, that post is still active, unless I went back and deleted it. Expiring posts, we can set an option so that that post is active for one week, and then it unpub unpublishes itself. It doesn't delete itself, it just hides itself. It's off by default, but I recommend turn that on, and not everyone needs it, but if yeah. you ever do... I think that those expiring posts are about that. For example, the customer wanted to you know, like, in your page, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, if uh, I myself, in a case, I try to Google myself how how long it's gonna expire. Somebody's like or something, or well, you like a post that seems like it's expiring because I didn't even put this expiring post, but some kind of a Facebook have a kind of date that they don't keep it for this searching engine to be somebody like your or somebody like your company something likes they gonna be delayed or something. No, if, if someone liked your page or your post, it should never go away. There's always a way to unlike it. Maybe they unliked it, but there's no way, to my knowledge, they don't, likes don't expire. Likes don't go away. Like, for example, you put the search, search. In Facebook or Google? Facebook. Mm -hmm. You search engine to say, say, whatever, you know, bakery, bakery, and then what, you know, you know, post like, you know, kind of things like that. Then you put it, you know, some kind of changing. They just delete some old posts. I don't know. It's not actually you're posting thing, but you know, when you search things, mm -hmm. you actually start engaging. No more than six months already, just starting engaging. Well, that might be true that it won't. There's so much to show on Facebook that it might not show everything that old, quote unquote old. There's just so much content. Okay. So does this allow you to set a date? Let's say you have a product line that ends at a certain time. Yes, uh, when we actually create posts, once we have this option active, there will be an extra box that says, when does it expire? Okay. This just gives you the ability, and it's not on by default, and I think it's right. useful to many people, so I'm going to activate it and remember to save that. And then let's say you wanted to extend it, can you change it? Yes. Okay. You can reactivate it. Or if you're about if it's about to run out, you can just change the setting and make it expire later. <coughs> What's on by default is that any person can send this page a private message. That's that whole messages screen that I mentioned earlier. There's gonna be a button on the home page of your page that says message them or whatever it's called. And so if someone is disgruntled and then clicks there to send you a message, you will get the message. If you don't want to deal with any of that, you can turn that off. I would recommend leave it on and then if you see that for whatever reason you get a lot of negative messages here then turn it off um, but that might be a useful thing that you might be hiding from yourself sometimes you know tech support uh, I know that I myself even though I use technology a lot I would still rather talk to a person on the phone 
Uh, so here could be something similar. I don't have a phone number for them, but they've got message ability. Okay, I'll send them a message. A person, in theory, should be able to answer me eventually. If you want that audience that wants to contact you, leave it on. Country restrictions, ages. That one? Yeah. Which one? Page moderation? Yes. Okay, page moderation here. Um, are there any words that you don't want to appear when people comment? If I let the ability to people to comment on, they can buy anything. And so, if people use the following words, um, that post will not show up automatically. Now, that is related also to the profanity filter right here, which in my case is off. If I go to profanity filter and say medium or strong, there's different definitions of medium and strong profanity. And what is the definition? Well, it's dependent, but it's dependent on the community, whatever community standards are. So if I choose strong profanity filtering, those posts won't show up. This doesn't go back in time, I believe, and deletes old posts, it's future posts. But then some words are not profane words, but you don't want them to show up. If you've got a Facebook post about a, po a certain political party, you probably don't want to hear the, the posts of, the, of the, some other party. So you can put in those keywords there and they'll get blocked. Again, this is how you can control your message, how you can shape your, your message on Facebook. Keywords separated by commas. I never want the word crazy to be to be added to my post here like that. So you've got those things you can set there similar page suggestions that's on by default which is good I do want when someone did you ever notice that when you like a page about a restaurant it's gonna say if you like that you might also like these pages that's that I do want that when someone likes a bakery I want my page to possibly get also sh shown there for someone and not everyone needs this but merge pages people always ask me I a friend of mine helped me create my page a year ago, and now that I want to do it for real, there's two pages, what do I do? There's a whole merge thing to do there. And if you're tired of all of this and want to get it up, delete the page. So at the end of the day, if this is just a test page, this is how you delete it. It's in settings, and it's the general settings at the very bottom. On the left side, let's go to page info. And briefly, I got a message that popped up that says, page info has moved to about. Did that happen to everyone? Um, what happened was, you used to have a setting. You have page info. And if you click page info on mine, it takes me to about. So this, this could be confusing. So we'll do it this way. If you click up, if you click page, the page tab, and then click the about sub tab, this is all your info about your page. This is also where you can change here. Is it a company, organization, or a local page? What we're going to do is we're going to take a break at this point because there's a bunch of stuff here that you could fill out. I want you to look at this on your own, and we'll take a break. And then if you've got questions, I'll answer them after the break. A lot of them make sense. Some of them might not. But this is a very important page for you to fill in, a very important screen for you to fill in, because it helps your discoverability. It helps when someone types these keywords at the top here for you to be found. I have a question about what we're looking at right now. Um, yeah. Where, the, where it says you can message the person privately, and I, I put it on, and where, does, where, does, where do they go to message me privately? Like, when a they... Box or, or? Yes, when they... I can't see it at the moment, when, but when someone visits my page, there will be a button over here somewhere that says send a message. Mm -hmm. So that's how the user will see it, a button to send a message. Okay. How you will see it is in your message screen right oh, there. And, okay, so that's the, okay, so do that. So it's uh, 7.30, let's take a 10 minute break. Maybe take a moment to fill out any of this info and I'll answer some of these if any questions pop up about this in 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.30. How do, I, how do you 